Okay, everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, there's still a number of people we're waiting on, but it's already about 5 past 11, so we're going to go ahead and start. Um, for those of you that just signed in, uh, there are some instructions here just informing you that you can either um, participate in the webinar by using your computer microphone and speakers or by dialing in using your telephone. Um, now, since we have a number of people signed into the webinar today, uh, I'm going to keep everyone muted during the presentation, and if you do have any questions, just simply type them into the chat panel or the questions panel in the GoToWebinar software, which is on your screen in the upper right-hand corner, um, and Becca will answer any questions that you might have during the presentation. So my name is Derek Bovey. I work here as a product specialist in our sales and marketing department, and uh, today's webinar is kind of a, a miscellaneous um, tips and tricks for um, the various reading tools in Zoom Tech. So I'm going to be demonstrating um, all these to you live over the internet in Zoom Text. And um, here's an outline of what we're going to cover. Um, starting off with which, uh, a lot of times people have questions about reading in PDF documents, or they might be blurry um, when you magnify them. So I'm going to show you a couple quick tips there. Uh, one of which is using Doc Reader, and then also some settings in Adobe Reader that are helpful. Um, I'll demonstrate to you why App Reader is useful on the web. Then we'll go through some uh, text navigation commands for App Reader and Doc Reader that you may or may not be familiar with. So when you're in App Reader and Doc Reader, you can actually use hotkeys to uh, jump between words, sentences, paragraphs, um, or pages. So there are all these hotkeys that are very helpful if you want to jump through uh, what you're reading. Um, we'll also go through Background Reader. Uh, in our weekly webinar uh, on Zoom Text 10, we showcase Background Reader, but normally don't go through the hotkeys. So I'll talk a little bit about where you might use Background Reader or find it useful, and then also run you through all the hotkeys. Um, and then after that, we'll, I'll showcase um, the Speak It tool and Reading Zones, which we also normally don't go over, but um, they're also two very useful reading features. And then lastly, um, I'll demonstrate to you some of the Zoom Text Say hotkeys, which are some screen reading hotkeys um, that can be very helpful. And then at the end, we'll open it up to question and answer as well. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into the live demo. Um, if you are running Zoom Text, now might be a good time to either lower your magnification level um, or just disable Zoom Text completely, uh, because I will be magnifying um, what you see on screen as well. So let's just switch over here. Okay, now I've already got Zoom Text running, um, so it's already up and running. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about um, are PDF documents. A lot of times you'll have a document, and you know it might look something like this. Okay, and if I zoom in on this, you're going to see that it's going to look very isolated and uh, kind of hard to read. Um, this is kind of inherently one of the issues uh, when reading PDF documents, but I'm going to show you a couple tricks you can use to get around this, um, one of which is to simply use Doc Reader. Um, if I start Doc Reader via the hot key, which is Alt-Shift-D, so again, hold down the Alt and Shift keys and then press the D key, that will go ahead and start Doc Reader, and you'll see all of the text is presented to us in the Doc Reader interface. Um, without any of that text degradation that we were seeing before, I can increase my magnification power, power 7x, and I could even scroll through the document if I wanted to. Okay, so that's one way to kind of get around this, um, the poor looking text in uh, Adobe Reader, is just view it in Doc Reader, um, and either the prompter or ticker. the ticker mode. ticker mode. If you look at ticker, there's an unmagnified preview of the text below, um, but you also get the benefits of the magnified text up here. Prompter. Now, Prompter mode. Um, better yet, there is some settings that you can change in Adobe Reader to make this text look better. Um, so what you'll want to do is if you go to the Edit menu in Adobe Reader and go down to Preferences, which is all the way down at the bottom, on the left-hand side there are a number of different categories you're going to want to choose the one that says Page Display if it's not already selected. And in the right-hand side of the window, there's a heading that says Rendering and an option that says Smooth Text. Now, this is probably going to be set to uh, for laptop slash LCD screens or for monitor. You want to change this to None, okay? Because Adobe Reader has its own 
font smoothing. And basically, if, if it is smoothing text on screen, um, Zoom text won't be able to also smooth it, which results in the kind of pixelated looking text. So just change that to none. Um, and you can leave smooth line art and smooth images. That's OK. And then just click OK at the bottom. It's a little bit obstructed. Let me drag this up a little bit if I can. Okay, there is an OK button here. It's just obstructed by the Start menu. So I clicked OK. And now if you look at the text, much easier for me to read. It's not as pixelated. Now, we won't have um, full X font support in Adobe Reader just because of the way that they render text. But changing that option is going to make the text much easier to read and less pixelated. Um, a lot of times, too, I also recommend to people to use kind of the, the zooming controls in Adobe Reader in conjunction with magnifying and zoom text. Um, if you increase you know, your magnification in Adobe Reader versus zoom text, you're going to be the text is going to look much better on screen because they do do their own smoothing. So again, just to reiterate where that setting is, um, which is going to make it look much better with zoom text anyway, uh, edit menu and then preferences all the way down at the bottom. And then it's the page display category. And under rendering, change smooth text to none. That's really going to make um, PDF documents look a lot better when using Zoom text. Okay. And if you don't want to change that setting, um, I'm going to go back to about 2x here. If you didn't want to change that, okay, let's say I have this set to its default setting. Um, what you could do is rather than zoom in using Zoom text, where you can see this is very pixelated, um, I could stay at my 2x magnification level and simply change the magnification level in Adobe Reader. Okay, so this is redrawing it, so it is going to look um, fairly nice on screen, as long as I don't magnify it further with Zoom text. So a couple different options. I would recommend um, that you go in and change the setting here so that it looks best in most cases. All right, so that's our first quick little tip. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is using App Reader uh, on the web. Now, a lot of people, you know, when we demonstrate the reading tools in Zoom Text, uh, you might be wondering, well, you know, what's the difference between App Reader and Doc Reader? When would I use one versus the other? Um, when you're on the internet, App Reader is going to be much more helpful uh, than Doc Reader, and primarily because Doc Reader is always going to start at the beginning of the visible page. So in this case, I have our blog open, all right? And if I were to start Doc Reader, and I'm just going to hit the hot key, which is Alt-Shift-D, it's going to start at the very top ticker. of the page. I'm going to switch the ticker just to show this to you. Ticker mode. So um, Doc Reader is actually starting at the tabs across the top of the website here, home about our perspective, product reviews, et cetera, et cetera. Now, most likely, I don't want to read that information. I don't care to read that information. I probably want to start um, at the uh, article text further down below. Exit. So it's not easy for me to control where Doc Reader starts in this case. It's always going to start from the top of the visible page. With a document that you're reading, this might not be as big of an issue. But on the web, most likely you're never going to be starting in the upper left-hand corner of the page. So for that reason, App Reader is much more helpful. Um, now if I launch App Reader uh, from the toolbar, so I'm going to the Reader tab and clicking on App Reader. Visions 2012. It shouldn't have started from there, but what it should do, let me do this again. I don't know why it started there, but it should. Visions I don't know why that's doing that. But anyway, um, when App Reader starts, the frame is simply going to be displayed on screen. And it, and it should start up oh. here. Um, I may have the browser set up to display a cursor. But anyway, when you start App Reader, it's going to jump to the top left of the screen, and then you will left click where you want it to begin reading. So for example, you know, I've started App Reader, and then I can simply left click down here for it to begin reading. Before sitting down to type this article. OK. And so for me, you know, to begin reading this article, um, it was much easier to start with App Reader versus using Doc Reader, where it's always going to start at the beginning. One of the new hotkeys that we introduced in Zoom Text 10 um, is the read from pointer hotkey, which makes this even easier. So instead of Alt-Shift-A to launch App Reader, you can also launch App Reader by holding down the Alt and Shift keys and then left-clicking. This even gives you more 
uh, ability to start exactly from where the mouse pointer is. These were questions the researchers in the FFD were struggling with themselves, such as, is it always necessary to get genetic testing? Okay, so, you know, again, just, just some tips if you're on the web. Um, AppReader is going to be your easiest way to read content. If you were to look at a web page like ESPN, um, if I were to start DocReader on this page, look at all the content across the top that it has to read before I even get to any of the headlines over here. Um, it'd be kind of a nightmare for me to navigate. So, you know, I could just simply hold down Alt and Shift and then left click. Each row debuts as Yanks Sync Mariner's video vertical bar blog. Okay, so you can see how, how much easier that was for me to start AppReader from there. Um, so just a, a quick tip for when you're on the web. Now, many of you may or may not know that you can also control the navigation of AppReader and DocReader while it's reading. Um, so I'll show, you, show this to you in a Word document. Um, so you have a number of different commands, and I'm just going to start AppReader and then pause it quickly. The Gettysburg. Okay. So you can, while AppReader is reading, or even while it's paused, you can navigate between words, sentences, or paragraphs. Um, if you want to move between words, you can simply use the arrow keys, left and right. Gettysburg. Address. Four. Score. Four. Okay, I can even use the up and down arrows to move between lines. Continent. Four. Continent. Proposition. Okay. Continent. So, pretty, it's pretty straightforward how you can move uh, between words. If you want Zoom text to say the current word, um, and this will only work if reading is paused. And by the way, these hotkeys and what I'm doing here is exactly the same in Doc Reader. I'm just showing it to you in App Reader because it's a little bit easier uh, to visually tell how the document um, is arranged. So if you want Zoom text to say the current word, you can either hit the space bar Continent. or uh, on the keyboard hold down control and press the five key on the number pad uh, with the num lock off. Continent. Okay, and if you continue to hit either one of those hot keys, it'll say the word, spell it, and then also give you the military spelling for that word. So let's do that. So I'll hit space bar once. Continent. I'll hit it again. C-O-N-T-I-N-E-N-T. -E -E so it spelled it, and now one last time. Continent. Whoops, I didn't do it quick enough, so I'll do that again. C-O-N-T-I-N-E-N-T. -E Charlie Oscar November Tango Indian November Echo November Tango. Okay, so you can see that it also gave the military spelling of that word as well. So that can be helpful. You know, maybe you're reading something, and, you know, you heard a word or a person's name, and you just didn't understand what the speech said said, you can pause the reading and just hit the space bar a couple times for it, not only to spell it, but also give you the military spelling for it as well. Um, so that's how you navigate between words. Use the arrow keys. Space bar will read the current word and also spell it for you. If you want to navigate between sentences, hold down the control and alt keys and use your left and right arrow key. Now we are engaged in a great civil war. We are met on a great battlefield. We have come to dedicate. We are met on it. Now we are engaged for score and set. Okay, so I was just navigating left and right through a few sentences. You can see how that worked. Um, again, control, alt, left and right is going to go uh, to the previous or next sentence. If you do control, alt, numpad, five, and again, anytime I refer to uh, that five on the number pad key, you want to make sure num lock is off. But Control Alt Numpad Five will read the current sentence and only the current sentence. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Okay. So notice that it read that sentence, and then App Reader paused. So it's not going to continue reading when you use that hotkey. It'll just read the current sentence that you're on. So again, for any of the sentence navigation commands. Um, you hold down Control and Alt, use the left and right arrow keys, or the numpad 5 uh, to read the current sentence. So that's how you can navigate between sentences. Now, next thing you can do is navigate between paragraphs. And for this, um, all you'll do is hold down the Control key and use the up and down arrows to go to the previous and next paragraph. So I'll do Control down to go to the next paragraph. The brave men living in dead. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and pause it. Um, so you can see that we had a break here, a paragraph break, and that's where ZoomText started. 
if I do control up, it'll go back to the previous paragraph at the beginning. Four score and seven. Okay, so anytime there's there's a paragraph break like between the title and the first paragraph, it'll navigate between that. So if I do control up. The Gettysburg address. address. Okay, so it went to the title. Control down is going to start at the very first paragraph. Four score and seven years ago. Okay, so again, control up and down is going to navigate between your paragraphs. So if you're on the web and there was an article, let me just see if I can pull up an article um, that has a lot of paragraphs. Yeah, something like this might be good. People. So, you know, for here, uh, this, this has a lot of different paragraphs on it, so I can While do some, control according to the up and down. Other unusual bits, other un Bobby Val Oops. Bob, ten tonight, so tonight. So, you know, if we started according here. According to the other unusual bits. Okay. Um, you know, I can just use control up and down arrow yeah. to read between the paragraphs. Also, um, if you want it to read the current paragraph, um, hold down control and shift and then press numpad 5, again, with the numlock off. While some gamblers could make a profit betting on heavy favorites like Usain Bolt, the reigning Olympic champion with great odds to win the 100-meter dash, other people could be dropping their money on some whimsical bets. Okay, and notice that it just read that paragraph and then paused reading. Okay, so that's paragraph navigation. Um, again, control up and down arrow to go between the paragraphs. Control shift numpad 5. Uh, to read the current paragraph. And if you want, you know, kind of a, a breakdown of all these hotkeys, um, you can find them within ZoomText. If you uh, go to the Help menu, click on ZoomText Help, and then go to the Hotkeys section, and then ZoomText Hotkeys. They're all listed here. Um, so you can see here's all the navigation commands uh, that I'm going through with you here today. So if you forget any of these, they are listed within the program, but I'm just showing you how all of them work. Okay, so we've gone through uh, sentence and paragraph navigation. Um, there's a couple others that are useful. Um, the home and end keys. If you hit home, it'll go to the beginning of the line. Four. Hit end, it'll go to the end of the yes. line. If you use control home and control end, those will go to the beginning of the document and the end. So control home is going to bring me to the very beginning. Yeah which is the word the, and control end will bring me to the very end of the document. Proof. Okay, so you can see that that's an easy way for me to, you know, kind of jump back and forth, uh, start to finish. Um, you can also use the page up and down buttons, uh, so you can you know, go up a page, go down a page, Proof. just like you would in, in, a, in a Word, uh, in Microsoft Word, for example. Now, on the web, um, there are some other useful navigation commands with app reader and so if app reader is paused, app tool. I can just hit the tab key to navigate through links stem cell therapy okay so there's one link read on zero comments workplace accommodation so these, these are all access store. these are all links that I'm navigating cover through. of the careers guest blogger featured in careers ampersand the disabled magazine okay so just hitting the tab key when app reader is paused will navigate you through any links on the page, which is kind of helpful. Just use tab and shift tab. Guest blogger. To go in the opposite direction. Cover of the workplace accommodation. And if you want to execute a link while you're an app reader, um, just simply hold down the control key and press enter. And it'll open that page for you. So it opened that article for us here. Uh, now we can start reading it if we want to. So that's another option that you have with app reader when you're on the web, is use the tab key to navigate through links. Okay, so those are um, some really helpful navigation commands for the reading tools. Again, you can use your arrow keys to go through the words. Control, Alt, arrow, left and right will read your sentences. Um, control, up and down will do paragraphs. And then if you use any of those modifier keys with uh, numpad 5, it'll read the current sentence or paragraph as well. So those can be very helpful for you, especially if you're doing a lot of reading or if you want to skim through something, you want to just skip, skip, skip through paragraphs or sentences, uh, that can be very helpful. Okay, um, next thing we're going to talk about is, uh, is Background Reader. So this is one of our, our new tools in ZoomText uh, that you may or may not have heard of. But basically what Background Reader allows you to do is multitask. So you know, I just demonstrated some of the navigation commands uh, for you. 
um, in app reader and and doc reader as well. Um, but while you're reading with those tools, you can't be doing anything else. So background reader allows you to be doing other things while Zoom text is reading. So a few examples of where this might be helpful. Um, one of which, which I can't easily demonstrate to you, unfortunately, would be, you know, let's say you had an article um, on ESPN that you wanted to listen to. Okay, so we'll we'll load up an article here, and um, you know, let's say I wanted to read this. Ichiro is now headed to New York. Pause this. They always have videos that play on ESPN, unfortunately. So anyway, let's say I wanted to listen to this article while I was checking my emails in the morning. All I need to do is select the text in the article. Okay, so I'll get, I'll get most of it here. And then go to the Tools tab in Zoom Text and click on Background Reader. Now it's going to start reading, um, but I'd be able to open up my email client and start answering my emails while this was reading. So I'll just start Background Reader and kind of fake that I'm logging into my Gmail or something like that. People in the sports betting industry in London put forth weeks of research and analysis in setting the betting odds for each individual. Oh, I didn't copy that article. I missed a step here, so I've got to copy this before it's going to read it. So that was text copied from another article. All right, so click Background Reader. The New York Yankees acquired Ichiro Suzuki from the Seattle Mariners on Monday in a trade that sent the Japanese star from a last place team to a World Series Okay, so I just wanted to kind of demonstrate, you know, this will be reading. I could log into you know, I email and start answering emails and things like that. So, you know, that, that's the idea behind this tool. You could be listening to something like this article, and I could be taking notes in Microsoft Word. Series contender. More from ESPN.com. The Yankees may have struggled with their acquisition of each row. The gamble didn't cost much and could result in a massive payoff, writes ESPN New York's Wallace Matthews. Story going to New York's high-powered lineup and playing home games in it are friendly. Okay, so you can see that while that was reading, I'm able to go into Microsoft Word and start typing. So again, Background Reader is, is very much so a productivity tool. Um, you know, it allows me to multitask. So um, leading into that is the hotkeys in Background Reader, which can be very helpful and kind of improve your workflow. Um, so some of the more helpful ones are... I'm just going to use the same article here. So let's say I've selected all the text in the article and I'm ready to start Background Reader. Instead of going to the toolbar and launching it, I can start Background Reader immediately by hitting caps lock S on the keyboard. The New York Yankees acquired Ichiro Suzuki from the Seattle Mariners on Monday in a trade that sent the chap. Now I just went ahead and paused that without clicking on the pause button on the toolbar um, by pressing caps lock enter. And I'm actually going to minimize the toolbar for now um, while I demonstrate those hotkeys. So caps lock enter will um, play and pause. So hold down caps lock and hit enter. Japanese star from a last place team to a World Series contender. Okay, I pause it again. If I want to restart the reading, hold down caps lock and press backspace. The New York Yankees acquired Ichiro Suzuki from the Seattle Mariners. Okay, and now let's say we want to navigate... Um, you know, between words and sentences, much like I demonstrated to you with App Reader and Doc Reader, you do have those same hotkey commands uh, in Background Reader. So if I want to go to the next sentence, all I need to do is hold down the Caps Lock key and press the right arrow key. More from ESPN.com. The Yankees made the gamble didn't cost much. The gamble didn't cost much. And could okay, so I was just navigating forward a couple times and then backwards. If you want to read the current sentence, just press Caps Lock Space Bar. The gamble didn't cost much and could result in a massive payoff, writes ESPN New York's Wallace Matthews. Okay, so that just read the current sentence. Um, again, caps lock spacebar and caps lock left and right will navigate between sentences. Now, let's say, you know, again, with background reader, you might be doing other things and, you know, kind of half listening while you're, um, while you're working. You may hear a word that you just might not understand what it said. So you can navigate between words by holding down control and caps lock and using the left and right arrow keys. Wallace. Yorks. New. Yorks. Wallace. Okay, and if I want to hear that current word that I'm on, control, caps lock, space bar. Wallace. And if I hit it a few times, um, it should spell it just like it did uh, in App Reader. Wallace. W-A-L-L-A-C-E. 
while loose. Okay, so you can see how that works as well. So again, um, caps lock is going to be your primary modifier key. Caps lock left and right arrow will go between sentences. Control caps lock left and right arrow will go between words. Um, you're probably going to use sentence navigation more than word navigation, I would think. Uh, the word navigation would be helpful in, in the event where you hear something and you're just not sure what, what was being said. Um, now notice that I minimized the toolbar. You might be wondering how you get that back. Well, it is minimized down here on the taskbar. I can simply click on it. But there's also a hotkey, caps lock T. That will bring up the toolbar if it's ever minimized. And when you're ready to exit background reader, caps lock escape will exit it completely. Okay. So again, some of those hotkeys we went through um, to read the selected text, caps lock S. Each row figures to provide a significant caps lock enter to pause, caps lock backspace to restart. Each row figures to provide and then caps lock left and right for sentence navigation, control caps lock left and right for word navigation, and um, caps T for the toolbar, caps escape to exit. Okay. If you ever forget any of those, again, you can go to the Zoom Text Help system again, or um, if you go to the settings menu in Zoom Text, go down to hotkeys. And this is where you can also reassign hotkeys, but there's a hotkey group for background reader, and they're all listed here as well. So you can see caps escape is exit, caps right for next sentence. And you can reassign these if you want to change them as well. So much like app reader and doc reader, you also have navigation commands within background reader. It might be a little bit harder to tell um, where you're navigating to with background reader since you're not seeing a highlight or anything on screen uh, indicating where you are, um, but it's a nice way to kind of jump through an article um, and just kind of get the gist of it as well. Okay, um, now we're going to go ahead and move on to a couple other reading tools that we usually don't demonstrate um, as much, but they are very helpful. And we're going to start with the Speak It tool. And to better demonstrate this, I'm going to go, whoops, um, I had my keys stuck down here. I'm going to go back to ESPN's home page. Now, <clears throat> let's say I was on this page and um, you know the articles are over here, or the headlines anyway. Um, you know, if I started App Reader, I could go ahead and start App Reader and have it, you know, begin reading here and it would, you know, do its thing. But with the Speak It tool, I can kind of, I can selectively choose what I want Zoom Text to read. So if I go to the Zoom Text toolbar, click on the Reader tab, and then click on the Speak It tool, you're going to see this kind of word balloon uh, attached to your mouse pointer. And the Speak It tool allows you to do spot reading anywhere on screen. I can click on a word and it'll read the word back to me. Videos. Sports Center. Or I can left click and drag my mouse to make a selection area and it'll read any text within that box once I let go of the left mouse button. PSU. Sixty million dollars. Four year bull ban. Wins to 1998 Sports Center Yankees get Ichiro for prospects Sports Center Vertical Bar Matthews Ichiro debuts as Yanks Sink Mariners video Vertical Bar blog. Okay, so you can see that I could just select those three articles and have them read back to me. Now, Speak It Tool doesn't, it, not only does it work on web pages or documents or emails, but it also works on menus or dialog boxes or message boxes uh, or even list views. So, you know, up, up here, for example, um, you know, it should read this, but apparently it's not wanting to read it today. But anyway, if we had something like this message box here, okay? Remember history. All right. App Reader and Doc Reader aren't going to be able to read any text in this options dialog, but I can use the Speak It tool to get an idea of, of what uh, the text information is that's here. General tabs, content applications, privacy, security, sync, advanced tracking, tell websites I do not want to be tracked, history, fire, frog. Okay, I'm just going to hit control to interrupt reading, but you can see that, you know, I can use this to kind of spot read anything on screen, which is very useful because you may come into situations like this options dialog where app reader and doc reader aren't going to be able to read from that type of window. Um, so the Speak It tool is much more flexible in that way, and that it can read pretty much any text that's visible on screen. Okay, and left-clicking on a word will simply read that word. Websites. 
Firefox. But if you left click and drag, it'll read any text within that selection box. History, Firefox will. Remember history. Okay, so that's how the Speak It tool works. And this can be very handy because a lot of times you may not want to read an entire article. You might just want to read the paragraph. Um, so, you know, you can have your article open and, you know, I'm, I should also mention Alt-Shift-I will launch the Speak It tool. Um, escape or right click will exit you out of the mode. So if I hit Alt-Shift-I, you'll see that that word balloon is attached to my mouse pointer now. And I can just simply left click. Let's say I just wanted to read this little blurb here. There are 250 to 1 odds that every 4x 400 meter relay final drops the baton. In 33 to 1 odds that London Mayor Boris Johnson lights his hair on fire with the Olympic torch. This is quite an interesting article. Um, apparently people are taking, uh, they're, they're making bets on various things at the Olympics that don't have anything to do with the Olympics. Um, for example, there are people betting, and it's 1,001 odds that a UFO is going to be spotted once the Olympics start. And also, I guess, they're making bets on whether or not the London Mayor will light his hair on fire. So. Um, some pretty interesting stuff going on at the Olympics this week. But anyway, so the Speak It tool is a spot reading tool. Works pretty much anywhere on any text uh, that can be read in any application, which makes it very, very flexible uh, in cases where app reader and doc reader won't be able to read content. Now, the other reading tool uh, I'm going to talk to you about is called Reading Zones. And um, I'm going to actually demonstrate this to you in Microsoft Excel. Um, this is probably a better place to demonstrate how this works. But what reading zones allow you to do is create static areas of the screen that you want to have read. This is ideal for a situation uh, like if you work in a call center and you have a contact database, um, which is always set up in the same orientation. Maybe you have a name field, an address field, uh, you know, contact information like phone number, email address. You can create reading zones within that application and then simply trigger them via hotkey to have that information read back to you. Now, reading zones are static. So if I did something like, I'm going to show you a bad example of using reading zones uh, in Firefox here. Um, you can create 10 reading zones per application. So I can have 10 different zones. So what I'm going to do is click on the zones button and choose new. Now, whoops. Apparently that didn't work. There we go. Now all I need to do is simply left click and drag um, to make my reading zone. Let's say, okay, I'm going to make a reading zone around the headlines in ESPN because you know I'm going to go here a lot and this will be helpful for me. So I've created my zone. I can name it ESPN headlines. All right, and then I can click OK. There's a bunch of other options in here um, which really aren't too too important. But the hotkey is listed here, which is Control-Alt-1. Control-Alt-1 through 0 are your 10 hotkeys for reading zones. So if I hit that hotkey, Control-Alt-1. Headlines, my headline shares PSU, $60 million. OK, so it'll go through and read any of the text in there, which is great. You know, this is, this is excellent. Now I can just go to ESPN, hit Control-Alt-1, and have it read my headlines. Now, as I mentioned, reading zones are static areas of the screen. And this is on a per application basis, not a website basis. So if I go to a different page and hit Control Alt One to search, type and hit Enter Products. Okay, so that's that same area of the screen on the ESPN page, but a different site. And it's not going to be really that helpful uh, to me on various websites. You know, if you only go to a few websites, uh, it, it might be okay to do something like this. But for the most part. You only want to create reading zones and applications that stay the same. So I'm going to demonstrate this to you uh, in an Excel document, which in this case would never change its layout. Um, but you know, a good example would be if you're using something like a contact database or maybe something like Salesforce, um, where the contact information is always in the same place, because that's important when you're creating a zone. So. Again, I'll go ahead and start Zoom Text or bring up the toolbar, go to Zones, click on New, and let's say I want to create a reading zone uh, over my monthly totals. So I'll go ahead and click and drag. Okay, I'll just name that zone. You don't have to name it, um, but it's there if you want it. OK, 
Okay, so I'll create one there. Let's create a new zone. I'll create another one under the category totals. Okay, so I'll name it category totals. And I'm happy with that. I'll just create those two zones and click OK. Um, now I showed you there are hotkeys, Control, Alt, uh, and then any of the numbers 1 through 0. But if you click on the zones button, you can also trigger them here and see they'll be listed. So I'll click on the first one. It'll start reading that for me. It should start reading it for me. Monthly totals $545.549.551.1,259.1,600. Okay, so you see it's just reading that information within that zone. So I'll go back, uh, trigger the other zone just to see so you can see how that works. Category totals $1,625, sign $929. Okay, so you can see how that works. Again, it's just static areas of the screen where you can have, <coughs> excuse me, information read back to you. Now, in the case of, and I'll just try and mock this up so you can kind of get a visual. Um, you know, in the case of a contact application, you might have something like name, and then the person's name, uh, you know, company, okay, things like this, uh, phone number, okay, whoops, I had my numlock off, so that, okay, so maybe I have something set up like this. You know, what you could do is create reading zones for um, each one of these uh, various categories, so I'll create one for my name, name, new zone, create one for company, do a new zone, create one for my phone number as well. Okay, so now, um, and, and I'm just using this as an example, so now I have zones for various types of information that I would want to retrieve. I open up a contact, and I'll say, okay, what's their name? I can just trigger that zone by clicking on it here or do Control-Alt-3 because it's the third zone. Name Derek Booth. Okay, so I read that back to me. I could do Control-Alt-5 for the phone number. Phone number. Okay, I don't think I made that zone correctly. It was a little, they were a little offset from one another, so I probably didn't define that correctly. But anyway, you get the idea. This can be very helpful. Um, and it's an alternative reading tool to something like Speak It Tool or App Reader and Doc Reader, but it can be very helpful in a situation where you're looking at, um, you know, similar layouts of information, but you very need to quickly retrieve what that content is. So something like a con uh, contact database, Microsoft Access, uh, reading zones can be very helpful there. Not going to be as helpful in applications that are dynamic like web pages because the content is always changing. Okay, so that's reading zones. Did we have any questions at this point or no? Um, there's actually just one on the reading zone mm -hmm. about what happens to the zones when you close the application. You want to make sure that you save your Zoom text configuration um, before you exit. It will be it will save any of those zones within the application, um, but if you exit Zoom text without saving your configuration, uh, those will all be reset. But it will remember any of those settings as long as you save Zoom text. Um, and again, you can have 10 per application as well. Okay. There were yep. some other questions. Yep. I wasn't able to answer. Um, just another one just now about does the window have to be in the same position? The application window being in the same position, that's a good question. Um, I don't think so. Let me see. Name Derek Booth. No, if, if the application window is resized, like I made this so it wasn't maximized, um, that doesn't matter. So the the window placement or size doesn't matter. It's just, it's kind of the coordinates within the application, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Um, the only other question that I didn't know the answer to was, do we recommend not using the text smoothing feature in Microsoft Office? Um, I believe that we turn it off by default. So. Yeah, it should be turned off by default. But yes, you don't want to use any of those font smoothing uh, features in other applications because Zoom Text will do its own smoothing, and a lot of times 
uh, you'll get that effect like you saw in the beginning of the uh, webinar in Adobe Reader where the text looks really kind of pixelated and hard to read. But I think, again, that's something that we do automatically, so yeah. you shouldn't need to, you, you know, to worry about as soon as you start Zoom text up and then you launch, let's say, Word, it should look, everything should look fine. Yep. So um, there was one other question from Pat saying, I have problems moving around when reading on things like forum windows. How to skip around in those kind of windows? Um, like a speak it tool would work there. Yeah, speak it tool might be a better way to do that because um, <clears throat> there would be less jumping. I mean, if it's something that you're frequently going to be visiting, I mean, I, I mentioned that yeah, reading zones probably isn't a, a good thing to do on the web, but if you're you know if if you're going to primarily use it only for one website. Like let's say you know ESPN was one of the sites that I visit a lot. Okay, I could make zones for you know I've got my zone for the headlines. Um, I can create a zone for all the scores up here. Have that read to me. You know, so there's sports scores. You know, in, in the case of your forum, maybe you'd want to create uh, a reading zone for you know the topics on the left hand side and uh, you know the dates of the post on the right hand side. That can be kind of a helpful way to break it up. Um, again, the only thing to keep in mind is, you know, if they change the layout of the site, you'll have to readjust your reading zones. But um, that's one option. Speaker tool is an option. Reading zones are an option. Um, or you could use Background Reader as well. Just select the text uh, of the forum post that you're on, and then just hit Caps Lock S to have it start reading. That way, it won't do any jumping. Um, so, you know, for example, if I uh, select the text here. Do caps lock S, it'll start reading. There's no tracking going on in Zoom text, so it's not going to be jumping around on screen. Okay. Any other questions? Um, none that I. Okay. All right. So the the last thing we're going to talk about, and then we'll we'll open it up to question and answer um, as well. But the last thing I'm going to talk about here today are some of the screen reading hotkeys in Zoom text. Uh, some of which are very helpful. Um, in our other webinars, we normally demonstrate to you uh, using the freeze window and how that can be helpful, you know, to keep track of things like the time, so it's always visible on screen. Okay. Well, this is nice. It's kind of, you know, some people might find it visually annoying to always have that on screen. You might not want it to be on screen. Um, so there are some hotkeys to do things like read the date and time to you. Uh, for example, if you want Zoom text to say the current time. It's Control-Alt-I. 11.49 a.m. Okay, so it's 11.49. If you want it to say the current date, Control-Alt-Y. Tuesday, July 24, 2012. All right, so these are a couple ways you can use the speech features in Zoom text uh, to do things you might normally rely on your eyes to do. Look at the clock, look at the date. Uh, again, current time, Control-Alt-I. 11.49 a.m. Control-Alt-Y is current date. Tuesday, July 24, 2012. All right. And another um, one of these, what are called say hotkeys. We have all these various say commands, which if you go settings. to the settings menu, with hotkeys, dot, hot hotkeys, and it's under the hotkey group called screen reading. Screen. There's a number of them listed here, some of which are for Excel, uh, like the cell comment formula, row title, etc. Um, but there's many listed here. I'm just going to show you kind of a highlight of some of them. Um, let's say you have a dialog message come up on screen, and you didn't hear what Zoom text said. You wanted to read the message to you. Um, the Say Dialog Message command is Control-Alt-M, as in Mary. Do you wish to exit Zoom text? Okay, so that's the message right there. But let's say I want to know what the current button is that it's on or what the focus is. That's Control-Alt-F, as in Frank. Yes. All right. So the focus right now is on the yes button. So if I hit spacebar or enter, it'll execute yes. But what if, again? Why don't I have it read the entire dialog box to me? For that, we have what's called the say all command, and that is Control Alt A. So this will read the whole thing. It'll read the buttons and the dialog message. Yes. No. Do you wish to exit Zoom text? Okay. So it read to me kind of in order of where fo the focus was. The two buttons and then uh, the message as well. So those are some kind of, um, I wouldn't say advanced, but miscellaneous hotkeys that you can use. Um, they don't work 
everywhere. They work on most dialog boxes. The say all command is a helpful one. Uh, if you get a dialog message that you didn't hear what Zimtex said or you want to try and read it, control alt A is a good one. And again, the time and date, control alt I and control alt Y. You can also use the speak it tool here as well. Um, alt shift I, speak it tool, and then simply left click and drag. Zoom text tin, do you wish to exit zoom text? Yes, no. So you could do that as well, but there are also hotkeys uh, if you're not a mouse user to read those uh, types of messages. Okay. All right, so that does it for, um, yes. I have a couple other questions. Yep, yep. Go ahead. Could you put an entire frame in a reading zone as well? So whenever the frame is updated on a website, then your zone would read the new information? A frame, like a web page frame. Um, reading zones isn't going to automatically read the content. You have to trigger the zone. But if, yeah, if the frame was static and was never, ch if it never changed the layout, then you could create a zone around that frame and then just trigger it and it would always read that content. I don't think a lot of web pages use frames anymore, um, but all it is is an area of the screen. You can think about it as kind of like XY coordinates on a piece of graph paper. That's your reading zone and whatever is within those coordinates is what it will read. Um, so whether that content changes or it doesn't, that zone is always that area of the application. Um, there's another question about is there a hotkey to minimize the ZoomText interface? And I know that when you have it up and you, if you have ZoomText running and you don't have the toolbar mm -hmm. and if you press all insert it shows up. Yep. Does that also minimize it? Zoom text user interface. I don't think you can. I mean, I would just say use Alt tab to go to whatever the other application is that you're on. Workplace you know, you can just hit Alt tab to go to the other application. It'll switch away from Zoom text. If you want to get to the desktop, you can always do Windows key D. Zoom text 10. Um, Zoom I text wonder, user interface. Let me turn off speech here. There is also another Windows hotkey, which is Windows M, but that's going to bring you back to the desktop as well. That just minimizes all windows. So there's no, there's no hotkey that I'm aware of just to minimize the Zoom Text toolbar, but you could use things like Alt-Tab to, to tab away from the application to whatever the last application was, or use Windows PD to get to your desktop as well. Anything else? Uh, no. Okay. There any other? All right. We're still going to field more questions, but um, there's just a couple other things I want to mention to you guys. Uh, as well, and one of which is uh, for everyone that attended today, we're going to give you 20% uh, off any Zoom Text purchase from now until the end of the month. So you have about a week. Um, if you use the coupon code Reading, either online or if you call us toll free at our 800 number and talk to our sales department, that'll get you 20% off of anything and upgrade a new Zoom Text purchase, uh, Zoom Text camera if you want to buy the camera. Um, so this is only good on Zoom text purchases, but we want to do something nice uh, for the people that signed up today uh, for today's webinar. I know we have a lot of interest in it. So um, again, the coupon code is reading. Uh, you can either call us or use it online, and uh, that'll get you 20% off. So if you haven't upgraded to Zoom text 10, now's the time to do it. Take advantage of the discount and um, save a little bit of money too. Um, just a few other things I'll mention. I'll go back and leave the coupon code screen up in case people want to write it down. Uh, just have our sales and tech support hotlines listed there. Um, we do offer free technical support on Zoom Text, available Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. So if you have any questions on what we went over today, uh, maybe you're not clear on one of the features or you're having problems with using one of them, uh, go ahead and give tech support a call and they can help you out a little bit further with that. Um, these webinars we do uh, once a month we do specific topics. Um, last month we talked about our handheld video magnifier called the ILO View. Uh, this month we talked about Zoom Text reading tips and tricks. Um, you can always find all this content on our web page. Uh, if you go to the support tab and then on the left hand side there's a link for training and consulting where you can uh, sign up for any weekly or monthly webinar but also on that same side of the page, there's a link for recorded webinars where we'll be posting 
um, any of the webinars we've done. Today's webinar will go up there as well, so you can refer to it uh, at any time. If you do have any follow-up questions after we end the webinar, um, you can always email us. Our, our email address is learning at AISquared.com, and we can answer any other follow-up questions you might have uh, regarding some of the content that we went over today. So I'll go back. I'll leave the coupon code page open, and um, we'll give you guys a few minutes to ask any other questions that you might have uh, today. Uh, I think I saw one here. Oh, Becca, maybe you answered this about the tab key working without app reader. Um, you wanted best tips to navigate between links. And yep. I mean, I know this is a reading tools webinar, but um, I was mentioning that we have a great new enhanced web finder, yep. which does have some, have some reading capabilities built into it. So I don't know if you want to. Yeah, you could you could use web finder to do that. I I think. If you're just interested in links, um, WebFinder is probably the best way to do that. I'll show that to you real quickly. You can do it in AppReader. Um, there's no reason why you couldn't just open AppReader and, and hit the tab key, but it's probably a little bit easier to do with WebFinder. So um, if I had a web page open, like let's say our blog, I can start WebFinder um, either by clicking on the web button here or pressing Control-Shift-W. Um, so that opens up our web finder tool. Simply change your page items type here to links, and then click on the next button. So, about our perspective. So this will go through all posts filed. This will go through all of the links on the page. There are links across the top. You can also use Control L and Control Shift L to go through links. Product reviews. And this is only when web finder is open. Are those hotkeys available? Tips and tricks. Videos, AI squared, subscribe, zoomed in, cover of the career, guest blog, featured in career, guest blogger. Okay, so that's a good way to kind of jump through the links. Again, you can use those previous and next buttons with your mouse uh, or control L and control shift L. You can do it in app reader as well, um, but it might be a little bit easier to do in web finder. Um, just change your page item search to links, links first. If you do all text here, um, you in can careers. still use the hotkeys, Control L and Control Shift L, but these buttons will be grayed out unless you choose links here. So that's one way you can easily navigate through links on a web page. Um, so how do zones handle dynamic text? Uh, they basically won't um, is the best way to kind of describe it. If you have a page that's changing, you know, whatever is there is what it will read. Um, so, you know, I showed you the case of ESPN. Uh, you know, if those headlines moved, whatever is in its place is what will be read. There's no way to kind of have a dynamic reading zone, unfortunately. It's just going to be a static area of the screen. But if that text changes in there and you recall that... It'll read whatever's there. Yeah. Text to yeah. So it's not an automatic thing, but you can have it, you know, just call it up every now right. and then. Yeah, if those headlines change, you know, tomorrow's headlines will obviously be different, but, you know, assuming ESPN's page doesn't change, if you trigger the zone, it'll read whatever is there. Um, when I say dynamic, I'm, I'm referring to more or less the layout of the application. As long as the orientation of where you've created the zone doesn't change, um, it'll read that same content. It's a little confusing, but you, you also, if you try it out, you'll kind of get an understanding of how it works. Um, certainly on the web, you know, if you create a zone for one page, it's not going to translate to another one. So that, that's one way to kind of understand how it works as well. There's a, um, the latest question I want to address. I didn't see. Let's see. Um, yeah, Jim, that's a good question. I think what I'll do is probably um, at the end of the webinar or probably tomorrow or later today, once we've posted the video, um, I'll send everyone that's registered to the webinar a link and then also a list of the hotkeys that I went over. Um, the one I was talking about was the one from Renee. Do you see that one? Uh, I don't see it. No, I don't see it. Wait, I'm in the wrong place. Um, the one 
one about, or excuse me, from Kenneth. It says, I got to the webinar late, so you may have already talked about this. I have to read manuals in PDF format. So far, I've only been able to make ZoomText read a, so, a section I select. Is there a way to tell ZoomText to start reading the text until I decide to stop, or is it fundamental that ZoomText can only read what is on? Oh, uh, I think I might know what this issue is. Um, so, only be able to read a section I select. And is this, uh, Kenneth, are you trying to use App Reader, or I, I, it stops reading? Maybe you can type and give us a little more information about that. Yeah, while you're doing, while he's typing, I also want to show you what I think might be the issue. Um, so there's oops, there's a setting in Adobe Reader. Okay, it has this what's called content preparation, where basically it can prepare one page or the entire document. Now, if you have it set to only preparing the one page, Zoom Text will only read that one page that you're on, and then you need to go down to the next one. So this setting is under the edit menu. If you go to edit and then accessibility, change reading options. Right here it has reading order, which you can just leave on infer reading order from the document. But if you look here, it says reading mode options. Read the currently visible pages only or read the entire document. For the most part, you want it to always be set to read the entire document. Otherwise, ZoomText is only going to be able to read the current page. I had it set to read the currently visible page only because this document was 243 pages long. So this was going to take quite a while for it to finish. Um, but again, you know, for best results, edit menu, accessibility, change reading options, and make sure this is set to read the entire document. So that might be what the issue was. You know, you said it's only reading a section at a time. Um, I'm thinking that maybe you know it's only reading the, the visible page that you're on and not the entire document and just stopping there. Um, so the next question, if you insert rows in an Excel file, will the zone reader include all of the rows? No, no, it won't. Uh, the reading zone itself, if you've created something outside of the zone, it won't it won't expand it to include that. So whatever, whatever the zone is, wherever it is, um, that's where it is, you know, until the end of time, so to speak, unless you edit it and actually change it. So if you had five uh, rows of information in Excel, you created a reading zone around those five rows, and then you added a sixth, seventh, and eighth cell uh, row of content, you would have to edit your reading zone and make it a little bit bigger to include that new content. So it's not going to expand based on you um, entering in any more data or information. Um, is zones linked to an application and a file within the application? Uh, it's, it's in the ZoomText configuration file, I believe. It's not, it's not linked to the application, per se, but it's part of the ZoomText configuration file, which is in the ZoomText program folder. So basically, you know, if you had, let's say, one spreadsheet open, and create a reading zone, yep. and you open a new spreadsheet. It's in the same spot. In the new spreadsheet mm -hmm. as well. Okay, so it's yeah. not linked to the file. I think that's what he was yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's, that's a good point, a good clarification. It's not linked to the file or web page. It's linked to the application itself. I know reading zones is kind of, kind of confusing, so... Um, it's kind of hard for us to explain, too, so hopefully, hopefully everyone got the gist of it. Um, people were asking frequently about hotkeys and are they somewhere that, you know, I could print out and just wanted to let everyone know that they are in the user manual. So if you have one of those, if you've already bought ZoomText, it comes with a user manual. You can also download them. We have them in PDF format and Word format on our website. And it's basically you have to download the entire user manual, but it is, you know, just one of the chapters in there. So you could always kind of cut and paste that out and, and just print that or save it on your on your desktop and have that file accessible to you. And you can print from the Zoom Text Help uh, system as well. Help menu, Zoom Text Help. Uh, again, you can, you know, you choose the topic over here. So if I go to hotkeys and ZoomText hotkeys, I think this is 
probably 10 or 15 pages here. Um, but you could open that and then go to print right here and print it out as well. But as Becca mentioned, it is in the uh, user's guide and the quick reference guide has most of the hotkeys also, and that's not as big as the um, user's guide. Um, so next question. Oh, question. If you change a hotkey, will ZoomText tell you if this is in conflict with something else? No, only if the hotkey is in conflict with another ZoomText hotkey. But for example, I think Control Shift R is a Outlook hotkey to reply to an email, but it's also the hotkey for to turn the cursor enhancement on and off. So there are some conflicts out there. Zoom text will always take priority over other applications' hotkeys, but it won't. We won't be able to tell if another application has a hotkey associated to uh, what Zoom text is doing. It'll only tell you if there's a conflict with another Zoom text hotkey. Um, I saw another question come up about do the say hotkeys work if you have speech turned off, and they don't. You have to have speech enabled in order for those say hotkeys to work. So, very good question there. Okay, so let's see. Were there any other questions that you saw that would be good to bring up? Um, if you might want to talk about, a couple people asked about OCRing and when you encounter a PDF that's actually not text. Yep. Reading. We are going to have a program coming out soon, probably in the next couple months, called Image Reader that will do that. Zoom text right now, it doesn't perform any OCR, which, which means Occasionally, you'll get a PDF that's actually just a scanned image. It looks like it should be text, and it looks like ZoomText should be able to read it, but some scanners don't, don't scan to recognize the text characters. So we're going to be coming out with something that will come with a camera. You can take a picture of something, and it will read it to you. It's going to be able to have a, you can capture an area on the screen, and it will read it to you. So currently, there's nothing in ZoomText to help with with that situation, but and the, yeah, and there are programs that will convert PDF documents. Acrobat Pro or whatever it's called, Adobe Reader Pro, uh, will automatically OCR documents for you. I don't know how much it costs these days. It's probably a couple hundred bucks, maybe. But there are other programs out there that will convert PDF documents and attempt to OCR them. Um, but that is that's a typical situation. Like if if you're in an office. Somebody scans you know, on the printer something that's emailed to you as a PDF document. In most cases, it's just a scanned image, and there's no editable text there that ZoomText can read um, through that process. But there are some third-party apps out there, and we're, we're working on a solution for that, too, um, in the future. OK, um, any other last-minute questions before we end the webinar for today? And thank you guys for all the questions. They were all excellent questions. So um, really good participation. And um, hopefully you got a lot out of today's webinar. There's a lot of kind of miscellaneous stuff, um, you know, miscellaneous things that you may or may not have known about the reading tools in ZoomText. So uh, hopefully you found one or two things today that will help you in your day-to-day -day use of ZoomText. And also, just to reiterate, if you have any follow-ups uh, afterwards, questions on the webinar, um, you can always email us, learning at AISquared.com. And we'll be following up with a recording of today's session, as well as a list of hotkeys that I went through, um, so you can have those for your own reference. OK, well, it doesn't look like there's any more questions, so I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar for today. Um, thank you guys for attending, and uh, we hope you have a great rest of the day.